Be The Best You Podcast. The sole purpose of this podcast is to teach, inspire, and motivate everyone to be the best versions of themselves. What's up, everyone? We're back for another episode of the Be The Best You Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Dawson. If you're watching or listening to this video today, please make sure you take the time to like, share, subscribe, man. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about the show. So I got one of my good friends on today, Javario Crawford, a.k.a. Huggy. And we're going to talk to you guys about Airbnb and break down what it's like to be an Airbnb owner and host and all that good stuff. Um, introduce yourself, man. Tell them who you are and what you got going on, brother. Uh, like I said, my name Javario Crawford, but... All my family and friends call me Huggy. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm from a little small town, Fort Long. Uh, I work in Lancaster as a paramedic, but uh, uh, you know, you got me into doing the Air, Airbnb <laughs> thing, so uh, <clears throat> it's going going pretty good. You know, yeah. it's fun. I love it. Okay, Enjoy. it's summertime. It's busy season now. Oh yeah, yeah. Things kicking up <laughs> for real, right? All right, so man, let's let's dig into some of the questions, man. I have for you. Um, so I guess the, the first thing is, what's it like running an Airbnb property? Uh, at first it was stressful. <laughs> you know how how I was. I was on edge. It was uh, scary, but now that first step is always scary, right? Oh boy, that first <laughs> that first step was something. Yeah. But now you know I got the hang of it. I know how to work the site, and you know got the VRBO thing going, and so it's it's going good. <laughs> So not only do you run the Airbnb like myself and then the VRBO and have that link and everything, but you also do a lot of marketing on your own, whether it's through like Facebook yeah. or, or your coworkers or family or friends and stuff like that. What do you think about doing stuff that way compared to through the sites? Uh, it's more, the, I think like the sites are more for people that you don't know, mm -hmm. you know, that go on the sites looking for stuff. But you know, you also got like the family friends that you're kind of close to mm -hmm. that like you can like shoot like little special deals out to. Like, you know, like we have it set to like a three night minimum, but those two nights that you can't get booked, mm -hmm. send it out on your social media platforms and like, you know, people pick them up that way. Yeah, it, it, so it's funny you mentioned that. One, one of the tricks that I use is, so I think my, Two one bedrooms are four night minimums, and then my three two bedroom ones are five night minimums. But obviously, stuff like that happens where you have like a day open in between visits or two days open between visits. If it's a weekend, I'll open that up and allow that. But also, another trick that I learned is say, for example, someone's booked for like four days, and then there's a gap, and then four days. I'll reach out to like the person that's there first mm -hmm. and say, Hey, would you like to extend your stay? I'll give you the extra night for a hundred bucks. Yeah. And a lot of times they're like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or if they say no, then you ask the person that was going to be checking in the following day, would mm -hmm. you like to check in a day early? You're right. And then what you said about like the friends and family and stuff like that, you just have to be smart. You can't let people take advantage of you. It is a business. Right. But, you know, that is a way to generate and drum up business when maybe Airbnb and VRBO isn't, you know, getting you enough bookings in the moment. The catch to that is you need to have individual insurance. Yeah. That way if something happens, excuse me, like when you're renting through Airbnb or VRBO, mm -hmm. you have the air coverage and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you have independent insurance, like I do with my condos, mm -hmm. I can rent like a lady at the bank that I always see when I go in there. She right. knows I own condos. So I'm meeting her tomorrow at the bank. She's going to cut me a check. She's renting a condo for a week. I don't have to worry about anything because I have independent insurance. Yeah. So so it's, it's good to be covered like that. Make sure you're covered and you have protection. Yeah, because you don't want to. Yeah. You call slipping and no. somebody get hurt. Yeah, so if you if, so if you plan on doing that, make sure if if you're going the Airbnb VRBO booking dot com route and you want to do it independently, just spend a few hundred bucks and get the insurance for the year. You know, you can get a million dollar policy that way if someone gets hurt, you're covered. You know. All right, I think I paid a hundred dollars for a year for mine. Yes, it's not expensive. Mm, no, it's worth it though. Yeah, it's worth it. I wouldn't go without. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so, you know, I got plenty of questions on here for yeah, you. Go ahead, shoot. All right, do you ever read these crazy stories that people write about Airbnb hosts and properties? And what is your response to that? Before I actually before I actually started this whole Airbnb thing, like you would see stories, they make them, 
they make Airmen the host out to look like evil people that's like out to get you. Yeah. But since I became one, you know, it ain't it ain't like that at all. You know, it's more it's more like we're all humans. It's more like a person like if you shoot them a message, yeah. Like me, if you shoot me a message, I might be busy working, but I'll I'll get back to you and you know, I'll respond to you in a nice manner, just like, you know, I want somebody to do me. But uh they make it they make it look like like it's bad, but it's really I think bad. we live in a society, a victim mentality society. Yeah. And it's almost like there's this competition. I'll out victim you. Right. No, I'll out victim you. Yeah. And then a lot of times I think people make up these elaborate stories to get attention. Because just as me and my wife own these Airbnb properties, we also travel a lot and use Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Never once have I ran into a problem. <clears throat> no, any of the Airbnbs I've ever went I'm not saying that there's not a bad apple out there or several bad apples out there, but they're few and far between. So it's crazy to me when I read all these horror stories and I'm like, I've never ran into one of those. Mm-hmm. I've never ran into one of those. Uh, the worst thing I've ever seen is maybe a cobweb. Yeah, <laughs> like, <right. I> mean, <laughs> that, that's just life. And we're super hosts on one platform. We're premium hosts on another platform. It's not that hard to respond to people. You know, if something breaks, you fix it. Yeah. Make sure you have good cleaners. That is crucial, crucial. You know, one of our cleaners we share, and then I have a different cleaners for a different area. Mm-hmm. Make sure you have good cleaners. But... It, it keeps stuff nice. You know, we upgrade stuff a lot. Yeah. And, and we try to keep things nice for people. As people that like to travel, we know what we like when we go places, so we try to make it comfortable for people like that. Right. Like, one of our units, I think, has, like, um, 20 reviews. And out of the 20 reviews, every single one of them is five stars. Right? So, it, it, I think people over-dramatize stuff and try to get attention. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that there's not bad stuff that happens out there because there's weird people in every walks of life. So there might be some crazy people doing some weird stuff. I've never ran into that. I don't handle mine like that. I think people are looking for attention. I could get on here and clown some guests. Yeah. I could pull it in. <laughs> I can tell you some stories that will blow <laughs> your mind. You think that people's stories are funny about yeah. their host? If I, <laughs> man, if, if I can tell you, I don't want to do it because I'm a host. I look at it as a business. I don't want to disrespect people, but, you know, I'll have people mess up. I, on, 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 <laughs> on Thanksgiving, someone caught one of my units on fire at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, boy. So, we have a ring doorbell. What, a cooker? Yeah, so we have a ring doorbell, okay. right? So obviously, if the, it's so, I don't put cameras in my units. Yeah. Only at the front door. Only at the front door. Right. And, and you have the same thing. Yeah. So I can see you when you come in and out. If you open the door, right, and yeah. you go in front of it, it alerts it, and then I can hear it, right. Yeah. So I listen to the conversation. At three o'clock in the morning, they caused the entire building to get evacuated, burn up a brand new stove. They're high. Smoking in a non-smoking unit. I guess they got, I guess they got high at three got, in the morning. They forgot, forgot they cut the food on. Burnt the whole turkey up. Like and, and, and you know, burnt holes in my stuff. There yeah. was a mess everywhere. I ended up having to do a claim on it. But like, if I told you the amount of stories from people not being able to punch in a four-digit code to open it to people literally would message me. Like I had someone message me and say, "Where's the extra sheets?" And blankets for the pull-out sofa. And I told them it's in the closet on the shelf. Right. They messaged me a few minutes later. Where's the pillows that go with it? Right next to the sheets and blankets. <laughs> right beside the sheets. The sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm joking. I mean, I can tell you some really yeah. funny stuff. And some really crazy stuff. I don't want to drag people through the mud like that. But when I would read those stories of them talking junk about you know hosts and stuff, I would say to myself. God forbid I ever want to like expose yeah. some of these guests. Yeah, because it. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you this: for every one story you can give me of a host, I could right. probably give you twenty for guests. Yeah, I believe. From from the simplest stuff, like someone was the other day trying to get into the unit and couldn't get in. I literally gave them breakdown by breakdown instructions. Press this button, put in this four digit code, turn the knob this way. They're at the door, trying over and over, hitting it with their shoulder. They press the, you know, when you press the ring doorbell, it sends me an alert. Yeah. So then now I can see you and I can talk to you. 
And they're like, we can't get in. And they're like, just keep hitting buttons and buttons and hitting it with their shoulder. I'm like, stop. Yeah, before you break the door. Stop. Like, what are you doing? Hitting your shoulder against the door is not going to open it. Yeah. And just randomly keep hitting buttons and open it. Calm down, relax. <laughs> hit this button. Hit the four-digit code. Turn the knob. And it did. And I was like, <sighs> did, did, did they at least say thank you? They were a little bit rude. I think they were a little bit embarrassed. Uh, so instead of like being sorry to bother you, thank you, we appreciate it, like probably I would have said, yeah. they were a little rude. They were a little rude, um, but they, I feel like they, they were probably a little rude because they were probably a little embarrassed, mm -hmm. and probably because of how I was like, calm down, relax, yeah. like beating the door at your shoulder is not going to make the code work. No, but actually putting the four digit code in will make the code work. <laughs> <laughs> putting in the right code over yeah, the door. Yeah, so. You know, it, we're just going to move along. I'm going to leave that go. Thank you for everyone that supports me and my business. You know, I'm not going to throw nobody under the bus. And um, I appreciate everybody's business. And we'll be respectful about the situation. I actually like being at Airbnb. Yeah. Even though you run into some BS and even though there's some drama, you know, I'll email stuff people and they'll say that they won't get it. And I can see where... <sighs> I, I like being an Airbnb host. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I'm a hands-on type of person. I like doing stuff like that. So I've actually had fun with it. What about you? I, yeah, I love doing it. Yeah. You get to interact with different people. All, get to, all ages. Yeah, you get to meet people from all over the country. Yeah. And most of the time, you know, it's, it's fairly pleasant. Mm -hmm. And I think my experience is probably better than a lot of others because we do do extra stuff to make sure that, you know, it's a good user experience. Right. So. That's why we're super host. Um, and so I think people are cool to us. Like if you look under the ratings and stuff, we have, me and my wife are rated five stars in communication. We have 100% uh, response time within one hour. So I think people respect that. They're like, these people are really nice. They go out of their way, they're cool. They put extra things in the unit. They respond just like that. So um, I don't really have much bad to say. I'll just say that I hear those stories and I see those stories and I say to myself, mm, yeah. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't want these stories to come out the other way around. No, some some people are out to get hosts so they can get free stuff. Brother, do you know how many times I've had people try to run a game on me? <laughs> they, I have a cleaner that lives on site and a maintenance guy that lives on site. Yeah. I mean, I've had so many people try to get over just trying to get breaks or discounts. Yeah. I mean, you showed me today someone trying to like get over on you and get it in July for half price. Right. You know, so people are going to try you. I, I remember just. I'll give you one quick story. Last year, someone hit me up, and they were at the restaurant that's on site on the 33-acre mm -hmm. compound, and it's an outdoor restaurant. And so they messaged me saying that there was cats at the restaurant, and they didn't appreciate it and wanted to know if they could get a discount. First of all, that's that's like a half a mile away from my condo, yeah. right? It isn't the same 33-acre you know, compound, yeah, but, but that's like a half a mile radio. away from my <laughs> condo. That's not in my building. I don't own that restaurant or run that yeah. restaurant. And the reason that those cats go there sometimes, you know why they go there? Because people feed them. Yeah, right. So when you feed cats, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. But, you know, then when that didn't work, the response to that was to hit me up and say, well, your garbage disposal doesn't work, so I guess it was have to be here all week long with no garbage disposal. So I called Rob, my maintenance guy, within five minutes, I, he was at the door, knocking on the door. They didn't want to open the door. He knocked and knocked and knocked and knocked. So I'm messaging him. I'm like, hey, my maintenance guy's at the door. He's going to check that out for you. I don't right. want you to be there for a whole week with it not working. It, it was just working yesterday. Yeah. So eventually, after 30 minutes, they finally respond. They're like, okay, we'll let him in. They let him in. He went right in there, cut it right on. He was like, there's nothing wrong with this working final there. So they tried two different ways to get a discount. Mm -hmm. But, you know... I just try to see the good in people, but not right. everyone has good intentions. No. You know? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right, man. What is the wildest guest experience you had? Wildest guest experience. Uh, with me starting off, I guess I really haven't had that many, uh, that many, you know, wild ex experiences, but I say, you know how like the messages that you get and, and stuff. I think one was uh my my bathroom fan was too loud. And don't you want that to be loud so you have some some 
Privacy? I wanted to be loud. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, know you got to cut the sink on then. Yeah. Right? And, yeah, right. So, I mean, that was probably the the worst one. Uh, I think I told you I told you this before. Uh, you know, my cleaning lady, she you know, she always makes sure that the condos, you know, right. And, you know, things everywhere. I always message her to just confirm, you know, like, hey, they said this. And she'll message me back. And then, you know, that's where it ends. But uh, they... Uh, they couldn't find the toilet paper, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know she was like, "There's toilet paper there. I just put two rolls there." And I was like, "All right." And then uh, they messaged me back and was like, "We can't find them. They probably stole them. I don't know." But like you say, I try to see the, the good in people. You know, why would you steal the yeah. tissue? Yeah. So, but you know, you know, she went out of her way to bring them more toilet paper. Left them, left it at at their door. I think they were going to the beach or something. Mm -hmm. But she left it at the at the door. I shot her a message and was like, you know, toilet paper's been delivered, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that was the end of that. You know, I had someone write me a four-star review one time because they said I didn't have salt and pepper in the unit. Shut but up. for real, I'm dead serious. <laughs> this same... <laughs> oh, God, damn it, I'm telling this story. <laughs> I drive to the beach three and a half hours, right? Because the handle breaks on one of my toilets. Right. So I'm out and I'm fixing, I'm in one of my units. I'm fixing the toilet handle on the other unit. My wife is messaging me. I keep hearing my phone go off because it's Airbnb going off and my wife messaging me. So finally point out, the person that's in one of the other units, it's an oceanfront unit, mm -hmm. they're saying that they can't enjoy the balcony because people are smoking out there and they can smell smoke. Now granted, all the units are non-smoking units. Right. So you shouldn't be smoking in the unit or on the balcony. Right. So <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, let me see how bad it is. Let me see if I see people smoking. So I walk out of the building. I leave the unit. I go downstairs. I go around and walk in the front of the pool. I walk up. My unit's on the second floor, so I can clearly see it right there, clear as day. It's only five stories, right? Oh, so you're, I, you're at the beach. Yeah, I'm at the beach oh. fixing the toilet of one okay. of my other units. Okay. And so my wife was like, would you please handle this? This woman is like driving me crazy saying she can't enjoy herself because they can't go on the balcony because it's full of smoke. Yeah. So I said, okay. So I walk around, walk around like by the pool and I look up and see like, is there a bunch of people smoking outside? Like what's going on? Guess who I see smoking? The woman that's complaining, <laughs> she's in my unit. Her and her mom are out there smoking. <laughs> they complain about other people smoking when they... I go and I knock on the door. <laughs> no one will answer. I knock like three times. So my wife starts hitting them up. It's like, that's my husband at the door. Because they're too busy outside smoking. They can't come, to, they can't come to, to the door right now. So finally she comes out there and we're talking and I'm talking to her and everything. And I'm like, I can't control what other people do on their balconies. Right. You know what I mean? And she looks so embarrassed. She looks like she's You know, so we spoke and we left. And then after that, she didn't bother us for the time she was there. But she left us a four-star review and said that we didn't supply salt and pepper. So I don't mind leaving stuff like that. I don't care. Like I do leave stuff in my units. Yeah. Here's the thing, though, and I'm I, like I said, I try to see the good people. People <clears throat> take stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. People like literally <clears throat> one of my units the other day. I put beach chairs there. One of my units. Someone stole two of my beach chairs. So like, you left me a four star review because there's not salt and pepper salt. in the unit, but there's everything else you can think of in this unit, mm -hmm. like fully loaded. Yeah. And you were smoking in my non-smoking unit. Yeah. But complaining that other people were smoking on balconies while you were doing right. it. Trying to get that discount, trying to get it for something free. It, it's yeah, man. So I, I I'm just gonna leave that as my wildest. I'm not gonna get into no other ones because I said oh, I'm gonna call people out and stuff and <laughs> nothing like that. But yeah, it's funny that they complained about your fan in the bathroom because as long as it's not like raggedy about to be broke. Yeah, about to fall out the ceiling. Yeah, as long as it's just loud because that's the fan, yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because if you're in there using a the restroom, there's certain things you don't want to hear. That's yeah. why a lot of times people go to the bathroom and they cut the water on. Yeah. But if the fan covers it up, then so be it, right? Yeah, I like a loud fan. I, I need that loud fan. <laughs> <laughs> so if you cover up what's going on. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, man. What advice would you give to anyone else there, out there that is thinking about starting an Airbnb business? Man, if you're thinking about it, just do it. Because out, man, if you hadn't ever gave me that push yeah. to do it, and I, you you even gave me a Robin, Robin's number. It's like, you called it yet? You called it yet? Yeah, you yeah. called it yet? You called it yet? 
And I was like, nah, man. And then I was like, you know what? I'm calling her today I'm gonna set after this we up. work out. We're, mm-hmm. we're going we're gonna to set this up. And then, you know, my whole mindset was you had to have all this money to start it. Mm-hmm. You, you don't. You don't need a million dollars to, to start it. You just need to have a plan and just execute your plan. You know, and stay positive, too. You can't be negative going into it. Well, I would say I use the law of attraction with everything. So I believe that if you have a negative mindset or negative outlook with anything, it's not going to turn out. Yeah, right. right. You have to have a positive mindset with everything you do if you want it to be successful. Because you have to think it, you have to speak it, and then you have to push it and manifest it into reality. Right. Otherwise, it won't succeed. And you're right. Like, you know, so you started with one, you have one condo. Yeah, right? yeah that's going So with one condo, no, you don't need a million dollars. Yeah. You need enough money to buy a condo, yeah, right, and, and then and then be able to run that condo. But it's 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 self generating. Mm-hmm. So as the money's coming in, as long as you're not living, and I mean no disrespect when I say this, as long as you're not living the bartender lifestyle, fast come, fast go, fast come, fast go. As long as you're smart with your money, and you say, okay, well, I make, you know, seventy five percent of my money over the course of five months because mm-hmm. it's a beach condo. As long as you're not the person that's blowing through that and you say, all right, well, here the money is, the money just needs to be dispersed smartly over the year right. because during the other seven months, I only make 25% of the money. Now, that's not necessarily all the case because we do have snowbirds mm-hmm. and we've been truly blessed with ours with snowbirds that come down and rent for several months at a time in off season. So as long as you're smart about how you're operating, it's a self-sufficient business. Mm-hmm. Especially when you do stuff like what you're doing, where you got Airbnb, VRBO, Booking.com, your coworkers, your family, Facebook. So you're generating business when business not beating up might not be there. I'll see. I've seen people. I've read articles and I've seen people complain a lot this year, saying that Airbnb bookings are down. So my response to that: if Air, if your Airbnb bookings are down and it's not doing well, what would you do? If your job was on the line in the corporate world, wouldn't you work harder? Right. If you was about to fail out of school, wouldn't you study harder? Right. If your relationship was on the rocks, wouldn't you try to mend it and fix it first before you just gave up? Right. Yeah. So like if, if your Airbnb bookings are down, try some other stuff. Like try the RBO, try booking.com, try putting links to your page on Facebook and say, hey, anybody out there looking for a condo, I got a deal for you, rent four nights, get one for free. Yeah. Put it on your, you know, Instagram or whatever social media page you have. You know, get cards made up like you did, like I have. Where you're passing them out to people. I told you, lady in the bank. That's the third different lady in the bank. It's just a bank that I go deposit money in. Right. It's the third different lady in the bank that's renting from me. So, if one avenue isn't producing at the level it was, find other avenues because mm-hmm. there's plenty of avenues out there. Yeah. If one ain't working, try something new. Yeah. So, you know, you you just have to put an effort like you would anything else, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, a friend of mine, um, <clears throat> I got this one message, and uh, a lady, she is a travel, what am I trying to say, a uh, travel agent. Okay. And uh, she saw that one of my friends uh, reposted my condo on his Facebook, mm-hmm. and so she sent me a message and was saying that she was going to be down at the beach for, I think, my sister's baby shower mm-hmm. and she was like uh, if you don't mind can we stay at your condo and uh, I can go live so she can promote it to her clients and also you know you know show my condo and maybe they'll want to come out and you know book it and I was like yeah go ahead do it yeah so I mean, like like you say you got to take different roads to you know get it there's done. more than one way to have success yeah I think a lot of times we have a closed mindset and when one thing isn't working, we're like, oh, this isn't working. All right, well, what else can we do? Yeah. Are you on booking.com? Are you on Verbo? Right. Have you put it on your social media? Have you made business cards to pass out? When you're meeting people on an everyday basis, whether it's networking, business people, coworkers, are you letting them know that you have this available? Right. Uh, because all of those are opportunities. So stop letting those opportunities slide by. Yeah. Take advantage of them, right? Yeah, use them. Yeah, I mean, if someone, if I knew someone, I don't know, man. I, me and my wife, we love traveling everywhere. Let's just say, like, we just booked a four-day trip to Virginia Beach, and we're going to a Chris Stapleton concert. If I knew anyone that had an Airbnb in Virginia Beach, I would hit them up and be like, hey, man, you got, 
So, like, let people know. Because right. if, if someone would let me know that they had one there, instead of paying the Marriott $500 a night, I would have booked through them. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That, that's the first thing I, I, I check now whenever I go, I go somewhere. Like, <laughs> let me see if Airbnb or VRBO got somebody. Because it's your support, like, small businesses. Yeah. Much. And so, I, I, what, sometimes I'll see, like, Superhost. Like, we went up to Gatlinburg, and we like Gatlinburg a lot, and we mm-hmm. got... Um, a condo there, and I've seen that they had five places in Gatlinburg, and we have five places at the beach. They're super hosts, we're super hosts. And I was like, Man, you know what? I was like, I should just reach out to the host and be like, Hey, I see you're super host in Gatlinburg, we're super host in Myrtle Beach. Would you like to work out where, like, maybe once or twice a year we can use one of your cabins, and once or twice a year you can use one of our oceanfront condos? Yeah, so you can also do stuff like that too, man. Yeah, because I ain't never think about that because, yeah, because now you're thinking in your head, Well, you ain't making no money off that. Yeah, you are making money off that. I'll tell you why. Because you're going on vacations throughout the year anyways. Yeah. So if your vacation just became free, yeah. you made money because, <laughs> because your vacation would have cost you a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so you just got to think about all those things, you know. All right, so what's your favorite part about having an Airbnb at the beach? My person? Yeah. Maybe. All right, so... Cause you can have an Airbnb everywhere, yeah. but you got it right on the beach. Yeah, that, that means when when somebody ain't renting it, <laughs> I can just take a three hour ride, yeah. two and a half depending on how I drive, yeah. and I can just sit at the beach until the night. If I'm, me personally, if I'm at the beach and somebody hits me up for a booking, mm-hmm. I'm packing up and leaving <laughs> so, <laughs> so they can come in. But yeah. I think that's, the, that's like the best thing, right across from, from, from the beach. and. I can go there You're in a good spot too, man. When I was younger and I lived at the beach, I lived down there and Garden City is a cool spot. Like I remember when you showed me where your condo was, I was like, Yeah, man, I grew up right down the road from there. I was like, That's a really good spot. You're right there by the pier and Sam's Corner and the arcades and everything. Sam's Corner be jumping. Yeah, so from like a um tour standpoint, from a family standpoint, you're in a really good spot. Because everything's right there. Yeah. It's a walking distance. Right. Um so I feel the same way about mine. You know, all of ours are at the beach. I love the beach. You know, I'm either on the water here on the lake where yeah. our boat's at or going back and forth to the beach. So it's a true blessing to me. I grew up down there. I grew up poor and I, I didn't come from anything. And I remember Myrtle Beach Resort where four of our condos is at. Um, it's a private resort. So right. it's a 33 acre private resort. You gotta go through a guard gate to get there. And on each, so in, in so not just anybody can be on the beach mm-hmm. because you'd have to go through that guard gate to go down and get to the beach. And then on each side of it is a campground. You have Lakewood campground on one side, Ocean Lake campground on the other side. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you have people on the beach that's not staying there because they right. literally would have to go park in Surfside and walk like a mile and a half to get there or go, par- no, <laughs> or go park on the Myrtle Beach side by the Spring Bay Pier and walk a mile and a half this way. And they're just not going to do that. No. So you have like a three-mile stretch of private beach, right? I remember my mom... You know, she worked down there at that Holiday Inn, and mm-hmm. I would I would walk the mile and a half, and I'd go in there because Myrtle Beach Resort was super cool. They had everything going on, yeah. and I used to fantasize that I owned one of those condos and that I lived in there. So last year, I filmed a video standing on the balcony saying, as a poor kid that had nothing that grew up down here, I used to sneak in here through the, <laughs> through the beach down there and fantasize that I lived in one of these condos. Now I own several in this building, and I can come down here anytime I want. So to me, it's a massive blessing. It's like a dream come true, you know? And I'll be able to just go to the beach whenever I want and mm-hmm. have an oceanfront condo. And it's a beautiful place with uh, there's so many cool things, you know what I mean? Is that the one that I stayed in? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like that one. So in that, and so in that building, yeah. you know, we have two oceanfront ones that are the one bedroom, one mm-hmm. bath, and then two of the side view, mm-hmm. they're the two bedroom, two bath. And then, then you know, and then up in North Myrtle. Yeah. But I always prefer the South End. Even the one, the one in North Myrtle Beach is a beautiful unit. I still prefer those ones there. Is that the one that you just like kind of redone? Is that the one? That- uh, well, I redid Pearl at the Beach, which is at Myrtle Beach Resort. Okay. That's the one we did the complete remodel yeah. too. The one that we bought up in North Myrtle, I mean, we've done stuff like a new refrigerator, new linens, uh, sheet blankets, stuff like that, new dishwasher, you know, some fancy little upgrades like tables and stuff, but that unit was really nice when we bought it. Mm -hmm. An older gentleman had it and he took immaculate care of it. And it's beautiful. It's got one of the best views of the ocean, the Grand Strand that you could ask for. Um, You should go check that one out sometime. That's that's a good good unit. (laughs) (laughs) Let me say say this, you you remember uh, back to uh, whenever you asked me on any advice Mm -hmm. that I, I would give? Yeah. So, you know, I was denied 
a, a bunch of times. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, I want to say maybe four times we was looking, looking, looking. I was denied because, you know, either this went wrong or this went went wrong. And I was shot down, discouraged. I was like, man, maybe this just ain't for me, you know, yeah. whatever. But, you know, Robin kept going. She kept sending me stuff. And then I thought I found one, but somebody uh, overbid me by like $15,000. And I was like, what? Why, why, would you, why would you do that? Why would you overbid somebody? By that, yeah, by that much. Just I remember that one. That yeah. was the other one in Garden City. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This one, it wasn't on the beach. This one was kind of a little ways away, you know, maybe a few a few miles. But this one, the one I got now, mm -hmm. I said that was best to get to get this one. Everything yeah. happens for a reason. And yeah. You are. That's a good unit, man. It came fully furnished. The guy left everything to the coffee cup, the coffee <laughs> pot, the forks. He left everything. Yeah. And I was like, you know, like, this the one for me. He left the bed. I almost bought the unit directly underneath you. Under me, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I wish I wish you, you would have got it. I know, that. I wish I would have too. Uh, I think I, I, I circled back around to that one because mm -hmm. I was going in a different direction. And when I tried to circle back around, someone swooped in. I was like, yeah. damn. <laughs> I, I, I thought I had time. I was playing with him. I was playing the game. I was playing the long game. And I circled back around. I was like, damn, they got it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I hit Robin up, I was like, what's up with that unit? And she was like, someone just got it. And I was like, man, <laughs> someone swooped in underneath me. You told me, you said, man, don't play with this one. Yeah, Get this one. Because what happened to me, I already knew. Yeah, um, yeah, man, and if I had any advice to anybody out there and, and, and you were thinking about it, I would say this, just do your research. You know, do your research about the HOAs, about what if, if your guests are allowed to use the amenities, if there's splits, if you can run it yourself. You know, understand the difference between a regular loan and a condo tail loan. Cash is always king, so if you go with cash, you can get stuff for cheaper, especially at the beach, because a lot of people don't understand those condo tail loans. Which I is, didn't. Yeah, which is a lot of what yeah. you had to go through that condo tail stuff. So if there's, even though there, even though mine are keyless entry, there's a building in the front that you can drop keys in and out. So because of that, anything that's on the ocean like that is considered a condo tail, you can't just get a regular loan. So if you go get approved for a loan for, I don't know, $500,000 and then you see a condo for three fifty dollars that you want and you go put a bid in it, what you don't realize is that, that money that they said you're good for, you're not good for because that's off of a regular loan. These right. are condo tail loans. You got to put more money down. The interest rates are higher. So if you can buy with cash, I would suggest you buy with cash. Pay attention to how much your HOA fee is. Add that into what you know you're factoring to make, so you can minus that, so you get a more accurate number of what your total income will be. Uh, and just be smart, man. Do your research and and, and don't rush in. You know, I kind of helped you with a lot of those things, but um, I was talking to a friend the other day that he wants to do the same thing, and I was kind of giving him those advice. And I was like, don't just go running in. Like, yeah. be smart and check everything right. out, so you understand everything, right. so you don't get caught slipping. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because if you don't, because you helped me with a lot of that, because a lot of stuff I didn't know. I messaged you all the time. I was like, man, I don't know what this means. <laughs> Let me know. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> all right, man. What are some of the upgrades that you made and user friendly items that you have put in the unit to get yourself more bookings? Uh, so I started off with, uh, <clears throat> so mine is a two bedroom. I turned one of the bedrooms into a bedroom and uh, I just had just a, you know, a single full size bed in there. But, uh, you was on me about, you know, the, the part in Garden City, it's like a family, like people bring your kids and all this stuff. And you was on me about getting that, getting that bunk bed. So, uh, I ended up making that bunk, that bunk bed upgrade. And I think I got more bookings just off a simple bump bed because yeah. you know it's a full on the bottom but you have a uh, twin, on top. Yeah, twin on top so you know kids can be in there but the adults can be in the other bedroom yeah man I remember like when you was telling me about struggling to get selling bookings and stuff I was like you got to make that change because that is a real family area yeah and they're gonna need a place for the kids right. and even if there's an extra it, it, you could have a 17 year old which could be on the bottom of the full mm -hmm. and a seven year old on the top of the twin right. you, know, you still got the couch your sleeping sofa and then you masturbate and but when you give people more sleeping options mm -hmm. they're more like because you have two bedrooms yeah. so you might as well maximize them you know that gives you so many more options because when a family's looking at it they're like where are the kids gonna be 
Right. But now you don't have to worry about that. Nope. I remember how happy you were. You're like, man, I've been getting oh, bookings. And oh, that was. I wish I would have done it sooner. Yeah. You know, like from the like from the jump. I told you. Yeah, yeah you did. You <laughs> did. You did. I was just I was just trying to get this thing going. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a pretty positive, pretty positive upgrade. Yeah, I would say you know we made sure we we've, we've done that and. You know, I, I felt like it was important when we went in, you know, even if we, like some we did replace the furniture, but if we did not replace the furniture, like mm -hmm. the beds and stuff, like make sure you get all brand new bed bug covers, sheets, pillows, yes. blankets, encasements, uh, uh, mattress pads, um, comforters, uh, all new silverware, dishes. I feel like that stuff was kind of crucial, making little small touches, like an umbrella, two beach chairs in each unit. Um, just making it really nice, putting flowers and pictures in there, leaving gift candles yeah. for when people come. We'll leave a personal note, and each person that comes in when they stay, they'll have a little personal note from us with yeah. a gift candle. And then we got um, a journal in there. People can like leave us notes and stuff. I, so I just felt like you know, making it more. Make it feel like home. Like yeah, making it more homey and making it feel like a nice experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So. That has helped a lot on our end. I feel like um, I learned a lot from from like what you like what you say that like you done. I try to kind of incorporate it in, into mine to try to you know make people walk in and be like, oh shoot, that's nice. You know, yeah, you know, they left us there, so they left us there. Plus, people will come back mm -hmm. if you treat people right in any type of business. So obviously, I own a fitness company. If I'm treating people right, I'm taking care of people, and people are getting good results, and I'm motivating them, and I'm having them hold themselves accountable in the way they wouldn't, you know, with, with my fitness company, people will re recycle and come back. If, with my landscaping company, you know, like, if I'm giving people good prices and good service and always on time and showing up, people are going to do repeat business. The same, yeah. It's the same scenario. People come and stay at your place, and they're like, this place was clean. The yep. communication was good. They left <laughs> us a gift. Like the condo was so nice. They're gonna come back and they're gonna continue to book with you. It's just smart and good business. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, man, it's just being a good person. I, I would appreciate if that if that was done for me and my wife when we go to travel. Right. So, exactly. Yeah, I had uh, I had people message me and be like, uh, they didn't realize how close. You know, yours is like oceanfront, like right there. Like yeah. you can look over and see the beach. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had people message me and be like, I didn't realize how close you actually were to the beach. Like I'm not like on the beach, but you literally walk out the door, make a left. It's like a hundred steps. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then like they would they would say, you know, I didn't realize how close you actually you you actually were. They said it was clean, we loved it, you communicated with us, we'll be back. That's why when I came to your condo that day, like I think you'd had it for a little bit, and, and, and I looked at your pictures on there, and I was like, why haven't you taken a picture from the balcony to show that the ocean's right there? Yeah. Because people want to know that they can see the ocean, mm -hmm. and you have chairs on your balcony, so even though you're looking this way, maybe not this way, but you're looking a little bit of an angle, yeah. you're still looking at the ocean. Yeah. That's why I came over there, I was like, let me take some pictures. Yeah, right. it, it's your feature picture, yeah. the one I took. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, right. look, and I, you know, that way they know that not only are they close to the ocean, but they can sit on your balcony and look at the ocean. Because yeah. that's important. Like, my wife has this thing, if we're going to the beach, she wants to be able to see the water. Yeah. She has this, like, and I don't blame her, like, I I used to be more serious about that than I am now, I'm a little bit more laid back about that, but yeah. she's still very serious about that. Like, if we're going to the beach, mm -hmm. she wants to be able to go on the balcony and see the water, because she's like, what's the point of going to the beach? If we're paying money, we're going on vacation, we're taking time off, I want to be able to see the water. Yeah, right. And I feel like a lot of people probably feel that way. Uh -huh. Yeah, like, a lot of a lot of my friends that uh that went, actually, uh, one of my coworkers just went down, he took his daughter down for a day, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was like, you know, um, if you have any days open, you know, do you mind if we go? I was like, no, nah, man, go, you know, go. So he went, he went down, they enjoyed their, their time, and he came back and he was like, man, I, I know you said that you was like, you know, like by the beach, He's like, but I didn't realize you was that close. I didn't realize I could drink my coffee and water <laughs> stay in the water and hear it. Right, yeah. yeah. And I think that's crucial and that's important. And uh, I, it, so anyone else that's watching or listening, another piece of advice, yeah. if you are, even if you're not direct ocean front, because three of ours are direct ocean front and two of ours are side ocean view, even if you're side ocean view, 
Like I have these really nice tall Adirondack chairs that you can sit on. They have cup holders on one of our, my, my wife's favorite unit, but it's a side ocean view. Let people know, if you have a unit that's not direct ocean front, let people know it's a side ocean view, but you can see the ocean clear as day. You can hear it, you can see how they're doing it because you'll be shortchanging yourself if you don't and you won't get as many bookings. You would be surprised how many people really want that. Yeah, like people will message you and ask, hey, you know, how far are you from the, you know, the big yeah. and so this one, this one lady messaged me, asked me how far was I from they David Buster's. I was like, I don't know. So I got on my phone, I Googled it, and I sent it to him. David Buster's. So the closest David Buster's is probably that one at Broadway Beach, right? Yeah. 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 So it's about a 10-man drive. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> All right, man. So tell everybody how they can find you and how they can book your property. So to find me uh, on Airbnb or VRBO, uh, the name of it is Sand in My Boots. I'm sure a bunch of y'all know where. I got that from. <laughs> but, uh, my Facebook is uh, Javario Crawford. I post that's that's why I post like the you know the discounted ones, the ones that and don't get booked. And stuff yeah. Like that, yeah. And uh, my Instagram, which is Huggy underscore, not yeah, Huggy. Huggy. Yeah, <laughs> it's Huggy H U G G I E. Not not the other Huggy. Not the Huggy with the Y. You know, people call me Havario. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Just mix them together. Just mix them together. Yeah. yeah. But it's Joe Barrio. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Uh, so remember, if you're on Airbnb or VRBO and you're looking for his property, it's Sand and Boots. You know, the better version of Puss and Boots. <laughs> right. Right? Um, <laughs> no, and, and Javario Crawford on Facebook, he's always posting links on there of discounts and specials that he's offering. Same thing, you can check us out. You can check out all of our condos that we have for rent. You can check out our home renovations. You can check out our real estate. You can check out our boat rentals by simply going to dndholdings.net and you can see all of our stuff. Also, you can find us just basically on um, Airbnb and VRBO, Jessica and Larry Dawson. And the name of our properties are Little Slice of Heaven, Diamond in the Sand, Perfect Paradise, Pearl at the Beach and Retreat by the Sea. Um, check us out, check the website out because on the website you can book the boat, the condos, it, it's cheaper, there's not those extra fees to those third parties and stuff like that. Um, I hope we answered a lot of your questions on the Airbnb stuff and I wasn't trying to be disrespectful to any of the guests or anything like that. Um, you know, could have said a lot of other things but I chose not to because I'm a business person and I want to be respectful. Nobody's perfect, we all make mistakes. Uh, I love business. I love doing it. I'm going to continue to grow the business and get more condos. And I'm going to help you do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I love, like, feedback. Like, whenever people come and, uh, you know, they don't have to post, like, so the public can see. But I like, you know, little feedback on, you know, stuff. You know, maybe I missed something. You know, we're all, we're all human. Give everybody out there, because this is the Be The Best You podcast. Mm -hmm. If you could give everybody listening or watching one piece of motivation to help them in life, what would you give them? Uh, never give up on your dreams. You know, like if you have this envision, like you said, like you used to go up and look, you know, at uh, at the condo, you know, and stuff. And I would say, if you're if you're thinking something, do it. Cause I used to do this, the same thing. I used to go on vacation, like man, I, you know, one day I I want to have something like this, or you know, mm -hmm. I want to start something or do something. Now look, now look at you. I got my own. Right. <laughs> so if you're if you're if you're honestly thinking it and you want to do something, go do it. Cause I'm you know I'm going through school and, and stuff, so I'm trying to trying to do school work, managing the uh, rentals. Yeah. So the only time you ever fail in life is when you quit. No matter how many times you get knocked down, keep getting back up. Right. Never let anything discourage you from your dreams or goals. Once again, the name of the website, D and D holdings.net. Man, thanks for coming on and doing this right. interview with us and breaking the Airbnb down. <laughs> <Right>. well, <laughs> and just the rental period. It doesn't have to be Airbnb. I, I called it the Airbnb, but it doesn't have to be. You could rent it out any way possible. Um, this has been another episode of the Be the Best You podcast. Please take the time to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the episode. Let us know other topics and, and questions you'd like for us to touch on. Until next time, man, everyone, try until you fly.